Hello and welcome to the second unit, uh, second chapter in Biology 2402 Lecture over Blood. This is chapter 17 in the Marib book and this will be uh, presented to you in a series of these screencasts. So this is going to be a very short one. So basic functions and components of blood. Uh, what does blood do? Well, it distributes stuff. That's kind of the first idea that you get, right? And the first thing that we think of it distributing is oxygen and CO2. Uh, fair enough, the oxygen we absorb through our lungs and CO2 we, re we release through our lungs and we take the oxygen to the tissues and CO2 back from the tissues. Now, the word distribution, some people think distribute wastes, right? That seems weird. Uh, we tend to want to think about removing wastes. Well, those wastes are produced by cells throughout your body and if you're going to get rid of those metabolic wastes like urea, you're going to have to move them around, basically transport or distribute them to your kidneys for them to be filtered out. Hormones, as we learned, travel through the blood. They have to be distributed. Nutrients from the digestive system, uh, chemical signals of other sorts, lots and lots of things are distributed. All right, for regulation, uh, temperature. So you might think, well, my blood's the same temperature as me, but... Uh, when you move the blood to the extremities, so my fingertips, the surface of my skin, it's going to have, it's going to be closer to the atmosphere and it's going to be able to shunt a lot of that heat. So you lose a lot of heat through your extremities uh, by vasodilating those. If you've ever been warm or uh, embarrassed, you'll, your face will flush and it'll turn red and you'll feel hot around there. That's because you're radiating a lot of heat. Uh, sugar levels in your blood, as we learned in the endocrine system, are controlled by uh, hormones, but that's sugar kept in your blood can be uh, modulated. Same thing with salts, same thing with blood pressure. Uh, you actually, the blood vessels modulate their own pressure. They can vasodilate to lower pressure or vasoconstrict to increase it. And you, pressure and volume go hand in hand, so you want those two things uh, to coordinate with each other. We'll see that in the in a later chapter. Uh, protection seems kind of intuitive. You, you, you want to protect yourself from infection. You've got lots of immune system cells in your blood and blood uh, protects itself from blood loss. If you get an injury, you if you get a cut, uh, it'll bleed for a bit and then it'll stop itself up, right? You'll get a clot forming and we'll describe that later in this chapter. All right, what is it made of? Well, it's your only fluid tissue, uh, unless you want to count lymph, which is just a blood derivative, as we'll see. And uh, you've got two parts of this blood, that is the plasma, which is the liquid, and what they call formed elements, which are the cells and cell fragments. The liquid makes up just over half of your blood, and uh, it consists of water, mostly, and uh, than a bunch of dissolved things. The formed elements, as we'll describe in, an, in screencast next, include erythrocytes, which are red blood cells, leukocytes, which are white blood cells, and you can see how uncommon they are or how important of a job they do, and then some platelets and, uh, you know, that's a couple of undissolved proteins, but mostly that that's it for formed elements. pH is slightly alkaline, just over neutral of 7, your temperature is 37 degrees, uh, which is 37.1, I think, is 98.6. Uh, some people may be a little bit cooler. Some people may be a little bit warmer. The uh, blood at your extremities. So if I measured the actual literal temperature of your, uh, your ear, in your ear hole, it would be warmer, I'm sorry, cooler than 98.6. The thermometers that you use kind of extrapolate for where you're where you're putting it. At your core, if I took a temperature of the blood right in my in my heart, let's say it would be most likely give or take 37 degrees centigrade. Five degree five sorry five liters average amount. That's if you don't know liters, that's like a that's like a, a gallon and a half give or take, right? Um, and that depends on your size. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal's got more than five liters and uh, a racehorse jockey has less than five liters. But that makes up roughly 8% of your body weight. If you weigh 100 pounds, uh, you've got about eight pounds of blood. If you weigh 200 pounds, you got about 16 pounds of blood. This little figure over here on the right just kind of shows how you can separate the blood out. 
uh, you don't have to know this process, but uh, take a blood sample and the formed elements, the stuff on the bottom here, are heavier than the liquid bit. They're more dense. So they will sink to the bottom and you can accelerate that process with a, a centrifuge. And that's it for the first video.